is fun. This is fun, fun, fun. I could use that as some more applause. I'm going to give it to myself. I hope you don't A little bit more, a little bit longer. Yes, this is in the Pursuit of Joy podcast. And it has been a harrowing experience, this um, this journey. Go from um, pretty much stable, uh, <laughs> broken, cracking ship uh, to managing to make it to shore to uh, not necessarily a deserted island, but make it to shore. So, you know, I don't have to drown in the... Uh, at the depths of, um, you know, desperation and uncertainty. And I managed to have a good time on this island. I, I'm exploring. I have freedom. I'm moving about. Um, I, I seem to be adjusting, okay, to not knowing where I'm going. But I kind of left some trail behind me to see if I can get back on that broken boat, which I did when I finished my my little adventure um, that, that short-term feeling of freedom, not knowing exactly what freedom was going to bring to to my existence, and I managed to get back onto the the beach, and somehow I I spackled uh, something onto the the, the boat's uh, you know structure to to keep it somewhat afloat, and with that I sailed off again and navigated to some other waters, and then I, I landed in a couple of other places where um, I did not belong, but I, I kind of make myself uh, comfortable and, and, and slip, slip pretty much into a, uh, a mind, a kind of a dreamscape state of mind where I was pretty much making myself uh, part of the furniture, uh, uh, the surroundings, I made them normal, I normalized my my abnormal uh, presence in that particular place and around certain people, and I managed to get um, so comfortable. I I got some employment in in the profession I never would have um, uh, worked in. I'm not nothing wrong against it. I I enjoyed I enjoyed that time. I got a little money and uh, p- clocked in and clocked out. Uh, the uh, blue collar work I, I enjoyed it like I said I, I mastered re- reducing girth significantly I was very grateful for that because no gym membership might manage to do that but if you work 40 hours a week 10 hour days straight in a row and then you um, get three days off and it's on nights you, you you're so exhausted your mind doesn't even want to to talk to you all the body body rules there the body just tells you just shut down I'm going to shut you down and you just need to repair and get up and do it over again. And I I did this for a little while and I find myself not having a, a place because I had to um I had to leave where I was. I was not pleasing the those humans where I was uh, uh mingling with and who so kindly offered um, a place to to land which should have been a very short visit and not turn into weeks or months. And I started to discover something about myself. And I talk a lot about self-discovery, self-improvement uh, and development. And there's some things that, that lurk from within that we just don't see as not being, not being uh, uh, healthy or helpful to to having a good healthy and you know and joyful life until it hits you upside the head where the reaction from others is 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 so hostile that you're not really even catching on that the hostility is because you're there and for that I have to say that I'm uh, I'm regretful because I I never want to put in place my place myself anywhere where people I know I have been friends with or or acquaintances and even family, I just being around is harmful to them in some way, or it triggers something that was bothering them before. And and being there is is a catalyst for you know really really neg and negative feelings and so forth. And my inability to read cues or body language, um, 
was a little bit, uh, I would say dormant. I can say that. Where parts of my brain were saying, you know, you're not part of this. You're not from here. Why, why are you still here? Those were very good questions. And, and with my analogy using, you know, being, being on a ship or a boat that's, you know, it's taken on water and, and you make it to shore and it's, it's kind of, it's kind of, um, not the end of the journey, but the beginning. Because when I, I talked to you about the pinch recently, uh, I'm, I'm not even going to try to go back to episodes and try to read which ones, which one it appeared on. Um, I have a library here. If you want to, if you're just joining me now, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. <laughs> and, but I'm grateful that you're here listening. And those of you who have been hanging on, uh, yeah, you're getting one hell of a show, aren't you? And I, and it's getting, it's getting ready to be even more more um, interesting. That's all I can call it. I wouldn't say disturbing because uh, my life is not disturbing. It's pretty good. The fact that I just fall flat on my face and somehow there's the universe just catch. I just catch it just enough that again the pinch make just enough an, an adjustment where I'm back on some sort of a track that's positive. But it's not the complete. It's not the total package. It's not exactly where I want to be. It, it, it is just a, a little taste um, of where I want to be, where I need to be. And I have to laugh because I'm, I'm so pissed <laughs> right now. I'm so seriously pissed right now. Uh, my own performance is not really good. But, um, but nobody else gets to be on this journey. So I'm, I'm documenting my own journey. I hope that you derive some positive from it and see the negatives Going from why I go one one podcast, I can be, yeah, this is really really good and positive stuff, you know. To, to maybe it helps you out and, and it helps me out as well. And my own, hopefully, last development in this lifetime. Because I'm really treating it as though this is, this is make or break for me. And I, at some point, I will, I will explain a little bit more. Not because I'm hiding or I want to build any. Um, you know, an ambiance to us or, you know, anticipation for, for something new. I'm only saying because I'm just like Indiana Jones. I'm making this as, as I go along. And I have had to slow down to a point where I have to observe what the universe is, is cranking out and how it's moving. And I just have to be really mindful as to where, where, that, where that opportunity is for me to shift, chain, shift and make make it to that lane and then just stay on that and stay in that energy flow. And if you have been struggling with anything in your life where you just can't seem to catch on and that's what it is. You just, maybe you should consider slowing down and observing how the universe really works because it is, it moves in such perfection and, and, and precision that, you know, Operating from within these bodies that we have, it's, it's a real pain in the ass. I'm going to tell you in plain English. There's going to be no way of making this sound better. But it's a real pain. It's, it's supposed to be a challenge. And we don't really catch on to that because from birth we're told that we're physical beings and we're not. And if we were told the complete opposite, and you may disagree with this, but hear me out. If we were told that we arrive here with a body. This is the only way you can get around and do business on this, on this plane. Most of us would understand it. That we, we are not physical beings because physical beings have limitations. We have great programming. We have great minds. We have great brains. There's so much of that about the human brain that's not known yet. Yet we, we treat it, we use so little of it because uh, we, we are dependent on what the environment, the physical environment tells us we can do and when we can do it. I get it. You're in a storm and you, you want to wear high heels and, and that a silk dress is, is going to get damaged in a storm. You may want to change clothing. You may want to, you want to still go out on, on a, you know, a night on the town. You may want to consider not wearing that silk dress. I know this from experience, so. especially certain types of silk. They don't do well with water. Why? Even if you wear a coat. 
you're still taking a chance that's going to ruin the dress. If you're, if you're a woman, if you're wearing high heels, you might consider wearing something lower that may not slip and, and you know, it slip on, on the ground when you're walking to, from a car into a building. Just dress for the weather. You, you have to, we all have to pay attention to the physical environment we're in. But the physical environment it does not always dictate everything. Other people should not be able to dictate how we how we behave, how we conduct ourselves. I mean, we do have rules, social, and we have a legal, um, you know, legal constraints. Yes, we, we have to keep some things orderly. Otherwise, we wouldn't be. But if we were born to a physical body, and just as soon as we have uh, the ability to communicate, you know, language, and we should get the word, we should get the memo that supposed to be creatures, you know, from this earth. We really are not. And the first, the first uh, wall that we got to climb over and into our real, true reality is, is getting over the idea that we're physical. We we are operating when within a physical environment, but we are not physical beings. And if we are given this kind of information, we would know better. If we're growing up, that we grow with the body, the body will have to be discarded at some point. But what are we doing while we're you know riding around in this body? We're, we're driving it, or or is it the brain that the body came with, the one that's really calling the shots and I said this uh, if you're joining us now it was precisely this um, this issue that I had before was the um, is the uh, are we robots question and we really are we are kind of inhabiting a you know kind of a a flesh and blood robot it doesn't have to be metal have we thought about this? We don't have to be made of metal. We don't have to be made of anything that is not um, that is not organic. That is not living tissue, and it's very confused to most of us. But if we approach this as as though we we are always aware that I, I'm supposed to be here for a reason. I, I myself I said this many times. I continue to say this. I believe this that I chose to be here. And I picked who I am. You don't have to. You don't have to believe that. You don't have to uh, subscribe to that idea. But just humor me. If you put yourself in, in my shoes, and in, in, in just look at your own lives right now, and you saw yourselves in the same way, like why? Why am I here? Why am I born? To, born into this family? Uh, why? Why did I have to have artistic? An artistic wanted to be a scientist. Uh, you know, we all have questions like these, don't we? Like, why is it that the other kid gets to be, you know, gets to be the scientist? I'm not good with numbers, uh, even though I'm, I grew up as a musician. I, music is applied. Everything's mathematical in the universe. Mus- music is exactly just that. It's applied mathematics. And it's beautiful because it, it makes us feel good. It, it feels good. It sounds good. It moves us from way beyond the physical. So we are math- made, of, made of numbers. In many ways, why why did I have to pick this this person that I that I am in particular? Um, I have I have to confess something. I I have felt some, and I'm a pretty harsh critic. I have felt some slight admiration for myself recently, whereby I could objectively look at what I've what I've, my brain has put me through, what I put myself through, and the fights in between. Um, old mindsets, old condi- mental conditioning that's really fighting for its life. Did I ever think that it was going to put up a fight like this? Never. Because it has actually pushed me into making decisions that have been so uh, uh, generally catastrophic in many ways, where it destroyed friendships, uh, they it crushed finances, lost... Uh, 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 personal assets just just boil it down to to uh, 
to a, a per, an existence of struggle and lack, which is a complete, the complete opposite of what I, I really think and feel, that there's plenty for everyone and then some. It's just we tell ourselves that there's nothing that we are lacking. And this has been a really huge fight. And so I made a decision in the past few weeks, and actually in the past week where I said the previous version of me had to die. I think I said that last week. And I know I'm using a strong word, but it had to die. It had to die like the body would die eventually. But it had to die. It did not want to go quietly into the night. It did not. It was hanging on, and I think uh, little bits and pieces remain, maybe from there's a little bit of blowout from rejecting the past, but the same behaviors keep coming back. Like, well, when I'm trapped in this X situation, this is what I do. And sometimes, but the, you don't have that resource anymore. Let's just say um, I don't have a place to stay, but I, I, can, I can switch gears and I'm just going to go ahead and cuff up money that I don't have. And then I'll get a place, you know, I'll use my app, I'll use my phone, but that it doesn't, it doesn't fix tomorrow. It doesn't fix the day after tomorrow. It fixes today. And I know that I've also always, I'm always talking about living in the moment. But living in the moment at some point um, really becomes a liability when we're misusing resources. And if we're misusing resources, that means we're, we're mismanaging the wealth of the universe. I mean, the abundance that's surrounding us uh, is being wasted. Is being mismanaged. If you, if I'm going to give you information in how to get better at something that you're not good at or something that you're not managing well, like I said, wealth is usually, money is usually a big thing. But also if you're not doing well at work or your health, that you're having symptoms about something. And that happened to me recently. I ended up in the emergency room. But I'm not going to connect all the dots with that, but it's it's all kind of, kind of happening very fast. And I was able to be seen and, and, and treated and um, it could be something minor to, in most circumstances, but it could be something worse um, any other time. So the timing was actually right. And it also helped me uh, navigate away from a situation that I was in where I was actually really left out on the cold. I have no one to, to actually consult with um, and no one to call who could be, you know, like you say, I got a friend who I can just pick, you know, call him up and no, I'm, there's no such thing. There's no fail saves built in. I'm really starting from scratch. I, I, I welcome it. I've been wanting to start from scratch for, for a long time, but it just never occurred to me. It will be like this. Um, I, I will be adding bits and pieces over the next few weeks. Cause I really want to see where this is going. Um, but I have, I have a, uh, a limited timeline in which to make the changes and exit the lane that I'm in and transition into a lane where I can be kind of, you know, play with the other kids, have kind of a normal uh, experience to an extent until I can get my act together. And this conditioning has really been um, really hard to, to ditch. It, it has... It is not afraid to to destroy friendships, to uh, to make terrible comments, to make enemies. It's not afraid of anything, and I I don't think that that and anyone talks about that because when we make decisions that we kind of regret, like we do it on the we regret it on the spot. You ever said that? Like you said something or did something, and it's like I should have thought about that a little bit longer. Uh, I've gone through. Uh, a really uh, fast, fast and furious period in the previous weeks where I was doing just that. And everything that I had from a previous version of me is gone. Like I said, I, I'm kind of glad of it because at least that leaves room for so much more improvement. But there could be no, no deviations from, from any plan from here and out. And that's going to be the biggest uh, experiment, is, is to actually prove that uh, the times that I've talked about manifestation, where what I'm really in the greatest need of is, is quality information. And 
even like I said, the people that I know would have have that who have actually experienced some of the things I'm going through and have gone through. Uh, they seem to treat, treat it a little bit like it's the cooties. You're asking for information and you get, I'm sorry this is happening to you, but there's no follow up on, I'm asking for information. Do you know someone I can talk to you that I can accelerate this process, that can help me get into this other process and so on and so forth. Information. So information is, I'm, I'm noticing that it's being treated um, like people treat money when they win the lottery. Uh, but eventually we end up splurging it, just, just spending it stupidly. And well, I never won the lottery, but uh, that happens to a lot of lottery winners. They, they, don't, they don't get advice, financial advice. They don't invest. They just, they just want to spend it. I, I get it because it, when it's lacking, when it's lacking in our minds, it is lacking in our pockets. And, and when it's lacking in our pockets, we're not generating, not regenerating with the, uh, some of the other things that I, I, I keep talking about that we could, we could create our own economies and then put that money to work for us. And then we can kind of sort of kick back a little bit and enjoy, enjoy the ride on, you know, on, on the planet. Enjoy travel and enjoy uh, good food and, and get, get a nice, safe place to do it. To be travel again, you know, travel some more. Uh, what, whatever your dreams are, whatever it is that you want to, to do. Whatever it is that's on your mind, that's that's the most wonderful thing that will bring you that joy. And right now, a sense of joy was actually feeling, I wouldn't say proud, but kind of giving myself a little pat on the back, like you know, most people would have crumbled by now, but you're still here. And I think that's the purpose. It's um, it's a type of growth, just knowing that you're when we're falling, we are still trying to get another answer to to that question. And I've said before that problems are not negatives; they're simply questions that don't have answers, and we're looking for the answers. So when we create a situation or a circumstances, that's we created a question. How do we navigate away from this? And sometimes we create a situation with how do we stay here, you know? Then it, being actually successful is another layer of it, this, this little game, because we have to figure out how to maintain that energy where we never drop in, in that frequency. We never drop below where we want to be, and we maintain it. So that also takes work, and it takes action. It takes diligence. Uh, it doesn't happen like we reach a point of, great success, but it doesn't, if we get there, I don't think, I don't know of anyone who just sits and does nothing. At some point, maybe they set up a system, like I said, where a financial system where they, money comes to them through products they created or services they created and branched out and they just kind of run themselves and, and you get residual payments, something, something's coming where it's, it's lessening that that need to to go out and hustle and be stressed again and that's how they they, they maintain that status that's why they maintain that higher a higher uh, level of productivity they're always thinking of something they're always creating something that bring that attracts more abundance and and it just flows naturally and then some of us that they do that for a while and then we start losing i've been on an up and down also where i'm pulling six figures and that, to me, that was success because I, I was making money, I was saving, I was working. Um, and sometimes I took time off. I was able to afford to take time off and entertain myself for a few days and, and rest and then go back into that grind. But at some point, I, I never really, most of the time when I did that, I did not really stop to think uh, there's, there has to be some way where I, you know, I enjoy work, I enjoy having a profession, but... Sometimes these professions don't last forever, and we have to find a way to uh, make ourselves useful and productive. And um, like I said, make money work for us. And I, these were things that I did not put into place, i say, 5, 10, or 15 years back. So I think most people don't really think that way. And, and when they find themselves not making the six figures, then they don't, they're not feeling successful anymore. And I've been successful um, professionally many times. I had a little point of structure, you know, 
where somebody gave me structure and I learned I wasn't doing well initially and then I just took off like a shot and I was making more money and I was doing well and I was feeling good about myself and then we tend to identify with with the job or profession if we're not making big money we're not we're not happy so again it's a simple matter of uh, we do we just want to keep going blindly into just hustling for that you know that paycheck but not actually doing something with it that energy other than just put it in the bank and spend it when we need to and uh it's it's kind of a vicious cycle even when you're employed and you have a place and but you got bills and uh, anytime you have liability that's always going to drag that's a big heavy weight on anyone and managing that is great as another layer uh, it's great to manage it where it's just a little payment a month if you want to consolidate or the best thing is just to use debt for that you know like the credit cards and such for for an emergency something that you cannot control where you don't want to tap into into other assets and and when it's paid off quickly that just builds even more energy so you get your credit your credit ratings go up and you're, you're attracting more money you're attracting more ability to move and to borrow and and to and to uh, invest into things and projects and, and grow and then attract even more money um so I, and then i talk about money a lot that because i've had plenty of it and because i've had very little of it when i was thinking that i didn't have i didn't have and when i was thinking that this is what i attracted is going to bring more money it did so going back into the point of manifestation we can manifest ourselves like i thought maybe i was so down and out that at some point i, I might be living on the street but i i did not see it in my mind i saw that we could get a taste of being on the street but that it wasn't my final place and then it wasn't and then i was correct uh, how i was going to breach that where i i was I was faced with some instability on the home front could actually come back to a, a, a point of stability, even if a temporary in a temporary basis where I could actually rebuild from there and then quickly move to back, back into the point where I needed to be. And I know I'm kind of all over the place, but I, like I said, when I started, I have no idea what the hell I'm doing and how things are going to resolve themselves uh i have a, a, a home base i i i'm i'm in a i'm in a strange place so i didn't tell you when i started i am physically in a strange place and uh there are other people here who are in similar situation but everybody has their own story so that mine's pretty unique compared to everybody else which is good but it was kind of bad because it, it made it made um made it a little bit tedious for me to be able to get answers. You know, that information I was talking about, just being able to, I'm reaching the right people who have information, but they just kept playing phone tag with me. So when the time came for me to make a move, it, it was a perilous um, endeavor because I, have, I had no idea where I would be. And then when I was headed, it, it was a one, one way ticket. I, I couldn't go back and, get a second chance where I was coming from and I needed to be where I am right now. Um, it's, it's just, I didn't want to do it the way I had to, the way I did. So I'm physically in a safe place where I can actually operate from, but it's on, but it's on very short timeline. And I just have to laugh again because getting information has been the biggest hurdle. It's not, it's not asking people money. It's not asking people to, uh, find things for me or give me things. It's it's, it's in, pe people hang on to information. Um, I don't think I, I talked about my previous uh, career endeavors, but um, I, I actually I was actually in place where it could have some potential to you know for advancement, though there really wasn't unless it was certain people. And I don't like I never like to talk about this because it, it just shows that. I'm just doing nothing but complaining, but if if you you don't have to stay anywhere you're not wanted, and we don't have to stay anywhere, any place, with any one person, 
any circumstance that we don't we don't find agreeable. We don't have to stay anywhere. Um, and if you're putting up like I did, you know, four years, I I put up with something that uh, it was no career and there was no advancement, and it was made sure that if I ever asked for for more information and how to advance, uh, it would it would be purposely withheld from me. And I found that, and I'm finding the same thing here, that when you're looking for assistance in some way, you just you just want to know how to navigate. You're not asking for them to give you the whole treasure trove, you know, of resources. You just need information. So a lot of people have learned to hang on to information as, as a tool. It's a, it's a control tool to to make sure that others don't advance. And you'll meet people like that. It's not just on the job. You'll meet them. You're meeting at um, social places, you know, organizations that you belong to. That it could even it could even be church, it could be anywhere. But I mean, you think that uh, other folks are going to be nice and congenial to you? They're going to withhold information from you because it, it, they think that the information is power, and a way it is, as much as money. I think, I, and I think I, honestly, the energy is called money is probably more easily given from one person to another than information is how do i how do i advance at this job how do i get you know more you know more opportunities to to learn and i'm i have actually just pure it's pure evidence right there under my nose that information is just as held is held just as closely by people because they see it as they work hard for it to get it, just like money. And and therefore, if they let it go, then they're not feeling that their the level of abundance in their thinking is not high at all. If they let that information go, then the person that receives it becomes, in a way, becomes competition for those resources. And... And they're just not as willing to let it go. They may give you a little bit of information, but it's going to lead you to a voicemail. The voicemail, or or it's going to be a, a long wait on, on a call line, on a hotline. And you just sit in there like, you know, my the battery on my cell phone is going to die before I get someone to pick up at the other end. That that, that, that sort of situation. And um, I, I know it sounds really sad, and it's, I'm, I'm not trying to bring any, any kind of... Um, um, kind of negative uh, energy to you this evening but when when you're out on your own and you just like there's no there's no longer even the boat on the island that's all gone I would say that was kind of a really fast storm and just ended up washing up and on shore not even that and this is more like a going in the middle of a going from a jungle to to a desert and there's there's nothing there's got to be something we're just not seeing it it's out there. there there's, a, there's an answer and there's a resource out there. Um, even in the desert, there has to be some water. There has to be some life form that, that manages to tap into under, underground water. There's always something that's, that manages to live. We can do so much better. And, I, and I, I, I've actually had to, to not congratulate myself, but like I said earlier, just I was I, I was actually giving myself some props, not not a lot, because there's still a lot of recrimination going on, and the voices in my head are kind of discussing, like you know what, why we, how, why did we get here, why did we do this? But there can only be one conscious, one conscience to to lead us on our life journey, and maybe that's it. Maybe I got too many, too many different you know, parts of myself trying to control. And it's just it's just going on a crash course. And I was just as happy to let it crash. It was unpleasant, but it was necessary because that seemed to be the only way it needed to go. This is not, um, if we're hanging on at all to our old selves and we've just been riding, we've just been riding that, whatever metaphor you want to use of a boat or a cart, whatever it is, it's, it's broken keep spacking it you know you, 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 you put it back together and, and keep running and you know if you have a car that's like that just 
just break down and you don't want a car payment, just break down and, and get some financing and, and get a car because that will help you. Mobility is really important and will get you to places. It, it's, it, it's a necessary thing. If it is a necessary thing where you are, then you should get one. But to hang on to it and hang on to it and hang on to it, it served you well to an extent and now it's breaking down and now it's costing you more. So when we hang on to bad behavior so that, you know, we didn't handle our relationships well and we keep repeating the same patterns. This is all about patterns. We get caught in the same pattern and we don't rectify it. It doesn't, it doesn't bring us any comfort and joy, but that part of the brain that's, that's conditioned to, to hang on to that programming is telling, it's not even telling you anything. It's just, just hanging on to it because this is what it knows. It has no, no feelings for you. It could care less if you're embarrassed that you had to ask a friend for, you know, a couple of bucks to get your gas in a car to, because you, you keep making these, these screwed up decisions, but you're just not knowing why. It's, keep, it's keeping you safe. It's keeping you from taking risk. And our brains are indeed programmed to avoid risk. It doesn't let us grow. It's, it's a catch-22. It's the same brain that, I, like I said many times, is the one that kept me many times from crashing into a ditch, coming home from many an overnight job. It would let me shut down for a nice, nice sleepy time while I was driving my car with my eyes shut until I reached that 1.2 miles from my home when I had a home. <laughs> and it would just wake me up right before I would be within like a few feet of crashing into that one tree. And then I would re correct my my steering wheel and go, man, not again, every single time without, without fail. Without fail. It is the same mechanism that keeps us alive. It, like I said, it has no, no interest in your feelings. That's all hormones and stuff. It, it doesn't want to talk to that part of the body. Its only mission is to survive, to keep it alive. And it will guide me home, and I will have my eyes a little sleepy, but I said, damn, I got to make that next turn, put my signal on, make two right turns, and then a left turn, and a left turn, and into the parking lot. And then I will stumble inside the building. That's, that's its job. It should be the only job my brain and your brain should be allowed to do. And my question to you is, how much longer are we going to allow the limiting beliefs and self-limiting beliefs and, and to, to take over, to continue to take over? Wouldn't that be better if you, you said, I want to aspire to be A, A, B, and C. That is exactly where your body would move and your brain would accept it. But first, we have to navigate through, you know, that, that hallway of horrors or, when, you know, the, the mirror things you get at the, um, they're not scary at all, but it's, dis it's disturbing to the, maybe to little children. You go into a hall of mirrors and they're all supposed to make you warped and, and and distorted, and and not, and it's supposed to be for for you know a gag. But in real life, it's it's distracting you. It's distracting you on the physical plane. And I I have to say that um, I'm through with that. The uh, the battle has been a nasty one, and only only one one of us has to can survive. I will still be. Uh, I will still be, have to, like any other person, we have to deal with intrusive, intrusive thoughts because it happens. It's, it's, that's how we are built. There's nothing can be done about it. And you can let them happen. You can let them, you can let the intrusive thoughts come in and tell you, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's not going to work. I don't think that, I, I don't think that what you're doing now, it sounds beneficial, but I don't think it's going to work. It, 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 you know, maybe it's working for the other guys, but not for you. It's telling me that right now, that just this morning, it was just, popping in there going just for a quick visit like you know by the way I don't think this is going to work out I think we just need to bail out find some other way and and I'm thinking you are really this conditioning is really nuts if it had any feelings or any personality it would be nuts and it would be the same thing for you and for your own brain 
because it just wants to survive. It does not like the change. It does not like the change in the programming. And the programming is so strong. What that programming is, and where, where in time in the past it, it gets so deeply ingrained that it wants to destroy the good things that we want to do for ourselves, where is it located? And how can we find it? How can we unlock it and just release it, retrain it? That's the biggest hurdle. Everything else around us, is it's already for the taking. Money, jobs, cars, jewelry, whatever it is that turns you on. Everything's out there. Food, everything's out there. Everything's already out there. But we're so blinded by that one voice that wants to keep us alive in spite of what we want. Who's in charge? Who's going to be running the show? And we will find out soon. Because, like I said, I don't, I don't really like having having a question, no answer. And I want to, I really want to pre- uh, tell you how much I appreciate you being here. I know this is a kind of probably a little weird. I usually have kind of a topic that I want to talk about and something that that happened or that I wanted to discuss. But now I'm discussing exactly what's happening with me right now. I have no idea again what the hell I'm doing and how I'm doing it. But one of us is going. One of us is going to come out alive at the end, and it's going to have to be me. I don't like losing, and especially not to some old-fashioned, obsolete, no good programming. Something someone told me along the way in my life that I couldn't do, and it hangs on for dear life, and it has to go. Are you having the same problem? You can drop me a line anytime. I'd love to know if you're struggling with anything, anything at all. Because whatever it is that you want to do in your life, you can do it. I know I can. But I have to take over from here on out. And from here on out, that's, I'm going to I'm gonna act as though I will only get one shot and see how the programming handles its own demise. I have to let you go because I'm a little hungry and I want to take a little snack before I go. Um, I'm thankful, I'm really grateful for your listening and... If you, if you want to let your friends know that I'm here, I appreciate you. I got a couple of things on YouTube. I'm not going to be able to do any travel for my blog. That's another story. Uh, I'm not in jail, but I'm kind of restricted from move, movement right now. So traveling is going to have to be pretty much on a local level, wherever I can go nearby. And uh, I, I think I can work that out just to get some videos uploaded to the YouTube channel. So... Again, I appreciate you, your time and you being here. This is in the pursuit of joy. Still at it. It's, it's going to happen. In the pursuit of joy, um, I really appreciate you again. I can't say it enough. Good night. I hope you have a great week because I know I will. <laughs>